Good afternoon and welcome. I'm Wendy Parsons, Vice President for Advancement here at Albright College. And it's my great pleasure to welcome you all to our Legacy of Learners celebration today. And to those who are listening to the recording of today's program, we welcome you too. Today's event is a wonderful opportunity to express our heartfelt thanks and gratitude. First to our student scholars, you have demonstrated perseverance, resilience, and hard work in pursuing your studies throughout the pandemic. Congratulations and thank you for rising up to meet the challenges of these times. And to our donors, thank you for your loyalty and generosity, which enables our students here at Albright to thrive and grow. It is now my great pleasure to begin the program by introducing our 15th president of Albright College and one of our most distinguished alumnae. Her Albright journey began in 1978 when she arrived on campus as a new student. Four decades later, after an exciting career as an educator, researcher, and leader of her own biotech company, she returned to Albright to lead her alma mater into a new era. Please welcome Albright College President, Dr. Jacqueline Fetro, class of 1982. Thank you, thank you, Wendy, for that warm introduction. And good afternoon and welcome to everybody, students, alumni, friends of Albright College who are joining us today or who are watching this video um, in the future. This gathering today called the Legacy of Learners is a gathering, it's a special occasion that I look forward to every year. It's a time when some of our most generous donors and the students who are impacted by their donor generosity get a chance to hear each other's stories. And I hope you enjoyed today's event as much as I do. So many alumni have shared their stories with me, stories of their origins, coming to Albright, the school that supported their success. Alumni like me, my mom was a kindergarten teacher. My dad mostly sold trucks. We were solidly middle-class. And Albright provided an opportunity for me to move beyond the artificial boundaries that I had set in my brain for myself. And scholarships helped me to attend Albright. I would not have been able to be here without those scholarships. And this is Albright's why, why we focus on high quality education to students of academic promise, because it matters. There is nothing more important that we can do than to help our students build a strong foundation for success in life and career. And today's students are just like me and just like the other alumni, alumni in this room. They come to us eager and talented and excited to learn. And they come to us from a, a very different social fabric. Our public schools are less even in the educational preparation that they provide. And the purchasing power of middle-class families has declined over these past decades. And, and at Albright, we have committed ourselves to building our financial structure and our academic programs to meet the needs of today's students. Most especially keeping college affordable and providing the academic and other resources that our students need to succeed. This is one of the reasons why I'm so grateful to Albright's supporters. Last year, Albright's supporters, including those in this room today, funded more than $2 million in student scholarships, helping our wonderful students to achieve their goals. And today you're going to hear from a couple of these students who will tell their own stories. And your support matters to student success. Nationally, we know that the gaps in college degree and attainment and social mobility have been growing for quite some time. And the data show that all too often, the economic circumstances of a young person's family define his or her future. At Albright, we are very intentional about changing that story. Although many of our students hail from America's middle and working classes, many Albright graduates in their careers and beyond move up at least one, two or more socioeconomic quintiles within the first 15 years of their career. This is among the highest social mobility movement, movements compared to Pennsylvania schools and selective private colleges across the nation. 
Albright is proud, very proud to be recognized for these results. In fact, this past year, this past September, US News and World Report ranked Albright College number 32 of all national liberal arts colleges named as top performers in social mobility um, in the United States. The student need is great. 95% of Albright's undergraduate students receive scholarships or grants. And an astounding 98% of our traditional students still have unmet financial need. The scholarships that you, our most generous donors provide, give that, give, provide support for the success of these students. Let me share an example of how donors have made a significant difference. During Albright's strategic planning process, we recognized that the annual costs of tuition increases were a significant financial barrier to students. And that this barrier was causing students to leave in their sophomore, junior, and senior years, that's even their senior years, with uncompleted degrees. So four years ago, we established the Advancing Lives Scholarship Program. The scholarship program designed to provide financial support to students in their upper class years, lowering the financial barriers and supporting their degree completion. Our goal for the Advancing Lives Endowment is $10 million. So far, donors have contributed more than $5 million to this initiative. Yes, we are more than halfway to our goal. And these scholarships were designed to have immediate impact. We did not have to wait for the endowment to vest because of the way these scholarships were designed. So let me share with you some amazing data. To date, Advancing Lives scholarships have supported 59 Albright sophomores, juniors, and seniors, helping to remove their financial barriers so that they can continue their studies. These students have a 92% graduation or academic progress rate. 92% compares to a matching cohort where that success is 54%. Yes, 92% success compared to 54% success. That's the financial barrier that your donations are changing, are lowering. Your donations to these scholarships matter. So I wanna thank you, thank you very much for your support. Today you'll hear firsthand from a donor who has established a scholarship and from a talented and creative student who has benefited from one. I hope you will find their stories as inspiring as I do. I'm gonna take the last two minutes of, of my, I, my words here to share one story. That of one of our wonderful students, Evan Carr of Bordenton, New Jersey. Evan is now a senior who is serving as his class treasurer. He has appeared on the Dean's List every semester since joining Albright in the fall of 2018. And Evan has benefited from several Albright scholarships, including the Joy Endowed Scholarship and the Jay Lawrence and Lynn Curtin Scholarship created by alumni Robin and Terrence Curtin in honor of their parents. After coming to Albright, Evan quickly discovered a home within the college's economics track. By the, sophomore of, by the fall of his sophomore year, he was helping his peers to succeed by tutoring them in both economics and Spanish. In that winter of his sophomore year, he took a faculty-led trip, educational trip, to Albright College's Rio de Suenos property in Costa Rica. That trip was made possible with the help of the Marion Francis Wilbur's Study Abroad Scholarship. The scholarship was established by Michael John Walker in honor of Professor Wilbur's and in celebration of their lifelong friendship. Evan spent his junior year interim session working one-on-one -on -one with Associate Professor of Business Accounting and Economics, Dr. Lisa Wilder, on an acre project that they designed together. Dr. Wilder and Evan delved into whether or not there is a difference between working wages for white and black people in different parts of the country. Evan and Dr. Wilder found that while workers in urban areas earn higher wages than suburban and rural areas, 
white workers earn higher wages than black workers in all areas of the country. At 34%, the gap between white and black wages is the highest in urban areas. This six week acre research experience was impactful for Evan. He connected deeply with his professor and learned that not just about this single topic, but also about the whole process of doing research, how to ask questions, how to research the answers, and how much he enjoyed that process. Having seen firsthand how the economics world can help other individuals has really motivated Evan. And now he knows for sure that he wants to go on to graduate school and, pr and pursue a career in economics. Stories like Evan's abound at Albright. Students who found their passion, who work closely with professors to apply their knowledge, who participate in learning abroad or, or learning away real world experiences. Join me in celebrating our wonderful students as they discover unique passions and grow to share their talents and their voices with our college and with our world. What we do would not be possible with donors like you who help make the students' work possible. You make it possible for students like Evan and the students who are who joined us in this room, some of those whom you'll hear from today and so many others succeed at Albright College. Again, thank you so much for helping us to advance the lives of Albright's talented students your support matters. And I would now like to welcome my colleague. Thank you for being here today. And I would like to welcome my colleague, Ralia Verdaxis, to the podium. Ralia. Thank you, President Petro. I am Ralia Verdaxis, Assistant Vice President for Alumni and Donor Engagement. I want to thank you for joining us today for this special celebration on our interactive virtual platform. To improve your experience here on Remo, I invite you to use the chat function throughout the program to share your encouraging thoughts and celebratory sentiments. Also, if you would like a larger view of our speakers, please look for a button on the lower left of your screen that looks like three little people in front of a whiteboard. If you click that, you will eliminate the ribbon of avatars at the bottom so you can focus on the presenters. Albright's mission states that as a diverse community of learners, we cultivate integrity, curiosity, connection, and resilience. Today's event celebrates every aspect of this important mission. You will see how a scholarship legacy cultivates these core values and passes them on to another generation. You will hear from one of our students in whom you will witness curiosity for learning, resilience to achieve her educational goals, the integrity to pursue her dreams, and her strong connection to Albright and her home community. Nafisa Muzan is one student whose story you will hear today, but she represents all our scholarship recipients. However, when we talk about a legacy of learners, we know there is a partnership, although often silent and separated by generations, between our donors and our student scholars. Through today's event, we will amplify just one story illustrating that relationship to understand how that legacy connects all of us to Albright's learning community. Every scholarship is a unique story. There's a passion behind the intention to support students, the impact on scholars while at Albright, and the opening of a lifetime of opportunity for individual students. In this exchange, both contributor and student are enriched and changed forever by this vital connection. The Derek R. Kehoe Class of 09 Memorial Scholarship was established by Derek's father, Kevin Kehoe, and stepmother, Lois Kehoe, after losing Derek to a grave illness. Kevin will speak to us today about what kind of person Derek was the growth he underwent at Albright, and how this scholarship came to be named for him. Thank you for being here today. Kevin, please join us on the podium. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Kevin Kehoe. 
Derek got here due to basketball and he had to complete the summer start program in order to be accepted as a, as a freshman. I was surprised at, by the change in the lad at the end of the summer. He grew up that summer. By move-in day, on President Williams' little st statement to us about that Albright was a big family. Time would show how, that tr how true that really was. Derek would, did well his freshman year. Yes, he loved it here. He loved his professors and coaches, made lots of new friends, traveled with the basketball team, enjoyed other school-related activities, and he even matured even more. In the spring of his freshman year, he was diagnosed with Leomyer sarcoma, a type of rare cancer with a five-year survival rate. He had surgery. We were thankful to learn that the margins were clear. Derek was happy not to have missed too much school here due, due to that. During the summer, he received radiation and was excited to begin his sophomore year. Labor Day weekend, we received a phone call from some of his roommates say, stating that Derek was having trouble breathing. X-rays showed a big spot on his right lung and, it, and that was inoperable. Derek received chemotherapy at two different hospitals. Professors, coaches, students, both basketball teams, female and male, came to visit him multiple times during that journey. Derek passed away on October 28, 2006. He died at home peacefully. His viewing was eight hours straight. Many people from the family, Albright family, came to visit and pay their respects. Shortly after his funeral, I visited President McMillan about starting a scholarship in memory of Derek. We had a good conversation. He stated, or he shared with me that I caught him off guard during the viewing when I thanked him for providing such a wonderful place for Derek to grow up. Plus the Albright family that he had mentioned. Lois and I started the scholarship with money which was saved for the, his education here. And we found it, we fund it every year. It is often helped by people who I help. I help a lot of friends and people doing construction projects on their houses. And I do that very willingly. I love the work and I ask for no money. But if they have a their own necessity to make me feel good or do something good for me. I asked them to make donations to the scholarship. Doesn't make any difference how much, how little, or if they even do it. We were thankful for the friends who also support the scholarship. Derek touched many lives during his 19 years with us, and he continues to impact lives of others through this scholarship. It's a pleasure to be here today. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Thank you, Kevin. As you heard, Derek was a student athlete playing basketball under athletic director and coach Rick Ferry. Rick, would you like to say a few words about Derek's leadership, both and on and off the court? Yes, thank, thank you, Ralia, and thank you, Kevin. Um, thank you for all that you've done and continue to do. It was my pleasure to have recruited Derek and coached him for one year. Derek was the future of our program. As a first year student, he paid his dues, while working hard, learning our program. He was a point guard and he was in a position to run the team for the next three years. In the spring of his freshman year, he was in the gym constantly. Uh, in there so much, I had to at times say to him, are you, are you on top of your academics? Because it was just, he was there so often, uh, more than 
almost any other player I had coached. Um, a, a, we felt so good about what he was doing to ready himself and, and in, in that position to, to run our program. As Kevin said, in, in the spring, he was diagnosed. Um, he, to, to us, to his coaches, to his players, he really downplayed it and truly had a positive frame of mind. Um, he, when he was cleared to return and he returned to school to start his sophomore year, um, he, was, he was fully ready, ready to go, ready to take over. Uh, unfortunately, he had the relapse. Um, and um, while he was in the hospital, me and the team visited him uh, on several occasions. Each time, he was incredibly positive, and he worked to make sure everyone else felt good during the visit. It didn't matter about his position. It was, it was how was everybody else. The last time I spoke with him, it was the night before our annual Interscott scrimmage, and he said he was working to to come because he wanted he wanted to come to it and he wanted to see the team. Um, unfortunately, he passed that next that very next day. Um, it's amazing how his final thoughts were of his teammates and wanting them to succeed and wanting to be there for them. Uh, Derek has always stayed with me, and I think of him often. Um, I think more of the person he was versus the basketball player he would have become. Uh, copy of the picture that you saw uh, hangs in my office to this day. Um, I am so happy that Kevin has created this scholarship in his honor. In athletics, we have the Derek Kehoe Award, which is given annually to the student athlete who has overcome adversity in pursuit of their goals and dreams. I think he's a very fitting person to name it after, and it always moves me when we, when we announce the winner. Um, Thank you so much for the time you've given me to speak about Derek as he is, remains to this day very near and dear to my heart. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rick, for the role you play in leading the development of our student athletes and contributing to their lifelong learning. This year's Derek R. Kehoe Class of 09 Memorial Scholar is Nafisa Muzan, Class of 2024. From Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, she is currently majoring in psychology and sociology, pursuing a track in criminology. Nafisa will tell us a bit about herself and what this scholarship has meant for her college career. Nafisa? Hi. First, I would like to thank Mr. Kehoe for starting and continuing the scholarship. As mentioned, my name is Nafisa Muzan. I'm currently a sophomore that is co-majoring in psychology and criminology. At Albright, I'm a part of the honors program. I'm a admissions ambassador, and I've been playing the upright bass for about 10 years. My music, cho my music of choice is classical music, hence my participation in the string orchestra and the Sunday Symphonia Orchestra. On my free time, I involve myself in the African American Society and the Black Women Leadership Association. I aspire to become a forensic psychologist, possibly working with the FBI. I'm interested in this career choice because it provides a balance of psychology and law, which allows me to work with both juvenile, youth, and adults. Being able to work with both cohorts allows me, to, allows me in my profession to understand the underlying problem within the cycle of deviant behavior circling to crime. Also being an aid to individuals that suffer with the inconsistencies, inconsistencies within one's life and the failed systems that are nor fairly catered to them. As the semester is coming to an end, I'm most excited about hearing back from the internships that I've applied to. One of which is an FBI internship where I could possibly be working in Washington DC side by side with FBI employees. And the other internship is an experience working with juvenile to the juvenile Diversion Academic Internship in Philadelphia, which entailed me to work alongside justice-involved youth with things like tutoring, creating and implementing education plans, and just overall providing an environment that is com comfortable for those, for those in the critical development stages, as well as further my concentration in the spring semester. 
diving more into my interests and finding out the endless opportunities that are out there that aligns with my passion. My choice of college was heavily impacted by a nonprofit organization called Philadelphia Futures, which caters to first generation students and helps, helps prep for college and assists with opportunities such, such like scholarships, internships, SAT, ACT, mock interviews, clubs, and many more. Not only do they assist with high school students, they, they follow the success of collegians. I remember the season of college interviews and meeting, meeting with Miss DeLocus. Uh, her personality was strong and convincing, but promising. Her responses were passionate and she made sure to keep me updated with the academic choice, with my academic choice to Albright. Much appreciation for Futures for being partners with Albright, granting me the scholarship and having the means of delegating these interviews with representatives. The student to teacher ratio along with academic courses persuaded my choice to Albright, especially being able to work with professors with research projects and even proposing my own independent research and in which I'm looking forward to doing. Being at Albright grants me the ability to obtain the proper knowledge and become an impact to individuals within my career choice. Mr. Kehoe mentioned that his son was very likable and was able to connect with many of his peers and teachers. Being able to have a conversation with Mr. Kehoe about his son creates more ignition behind my why for what I want out of my life. I'm glad to be delegated the opportunity to be the key holder of this scholarship this year and creating a relationship with the contributor to my academics. I would like to transfer the same, that same energy in whatever I do and whomever I meet. I will continue to create bonds and an impactful environment within my life to, to ensure my purpose is being fulfilled. Mr. Kehoe, I'm grateful for you to share your son with recipients like me and allow his spirit to continue to be my individuals to keep going. I also want to thank Albright for starting this event and allowing students to develop relationships with individuals that contribute to their education. Again, I would like to say thank you. Thank you, Nafisa. What a wonderful student. Um, Students like her make our work worthwhile every day. You may have heard Nafisa speak about the Philadelphia Futures Program, and it is through that that she learned about Albright College. This is a wonderful program benefiting youth from the Philadelphia area, helping them prepare for and pursue college degrees. Now, we would like you to hear from Marguerite DeLucas, Albright's recruiter for Philadelphia Futures students about how this program is impacting lives by improving access to higher education, thereby affecting social mobility for many first generation college students. Marguerite, please join us. Thanks, Ralia, and thanks, Nafisa, for the kind words. That was great, moved me a little bit. Um, as Ralia said, I'm one of the assistant directors of admission here at Albright. Um, in my role, I recruit for the city of Philadelphia as well as upstate New York. Um, but more importantly, I'm the coordinator for our partnership with the Philadelphia Futures program. Uh, back in 2016, Albright College and Philadelphia Futures formed a partnership in order to provide access and scholarship to their students. Uh, our partnership with Futures is how I met this wonderful young woman, Nafisa. Uh, let me give you a quick summary of what this community-based organization uh, called Philadelphia Futures is and, and what it does. Um, so Philadelphia Futures provides Philadelphia's low-income first-generation to college students with the tools, resources, and opportunities necessary for admission to as well as success in college. Philadelphia Future seeks to transform lives by breaking down the barriers that have historically excluded low-income first-generation to college students from achieving college success. Through its direct service programs, which are called Sponsor a Scholar and College Connection, uh, this organization annually provides over 500 high school and college students with academic enrichment, personalized college guidance, placement, retention services, as well as financial resources. Through its other services and resources, including Step Up to College Guide, which goes to every single public high school in Philadelphia, 
Outreach Futures, as well as the Charles E. Ellis Trust for Girls. Philadelphia Futures provides college guidance and financial resources to students throughout the city of Philadelphia. Once at Albright, Philadelphia Future students are guided by both staff at Futures. They have um, current college advisors that work for Philadelphia Futures that are partnered with students at Albright, uh, as well as our student success team here at Albright in order to ensure their retention and success at the college. Our student success team meets with our first year future students biweekly during the fall and spring semesters, uh, presents them with specific modules in order to help these students succeed. Uh, once they're upperclassmen, they're assigned to an advisor at Albright as well as their future advisor, just to check in and make sure that everything is good and that they're succeeding while they're here and graduating on time. Our partnership with Futures has brought our community at Albright so many great young men and women of academic promise. Nafisa just being one of the examples of these great future students. Thanks, Raleigh. I'll, I'll send it back to you now. Thank you, Marguerite. As I said earlier, the Derek Kehoe Scholarship is only one fund um, with a unique story. We have many more students in the audience that have their stories uh, related to a scholarship as well. And I would like to recognize each of them by um, speaking their names today. The resilience of these students to not only survive, but thrive during the challenges of the last two years is nothing short of exceptional. Sierra Chandler, class of 23, receives the Senator Class of 41 and Mrs. Robert Gerhardt Jr. Scholarship and the Class of 1980 Scholarship. Taisha Charles, the Class of 22, receives the Senator Class of 41 and Mrs. Robert R. Gerhardt Jr. Scholarship. Dylan Cope, Class of 22, receives the Homer Adams Memorial Scholarship. Gabrielle D'Amico, class of 22, receives an Advancing Lives Scholarship. Gisela Eck, class of 23, receives the Kenneth L, class of 25, and Janet Coltrider Benfer, class of 25, scholarship. Brandon Hernandez Ruiz, class of 23, receives the Walker Wadsworth, class of 73, scholarship and the William Sote scholarship. Amber Himes Vargas, class of 22, receives the Justin W. Griffiths Memorial Scholarship. Nafisa Muzan, class of 24, receives the Derek R. Kehoe, class of 09 Memorial Scholarship. Collins Munin, class of 24, receives an Advancing Lives Scholarship. Miranda Patches, class of 24, receives the George Frederick Croissant Memorial Scholarship. Joshua Turner, class of 23, receives the Margaret Woodring Brillhart, class of 1920, and Margaret Hurst Woodring Scholarship. John Wyke, class of 23, receives the Walker Wadsworth, class of 73 scholarship, and the Kraris and Radwanski Advancing Lives Scholarship. Darren Williams, class of 24, receives the Ray Mest, class of 62 mathematics scholarship. Kelly Ann Wilson, class of 22, receives the Willard N. Berger scholarship. Let's have a virtual round of applause to recognize these students. And I see so many applause um, coming in the chat as well. Thank you, everyone, um, for your recognition of these wonderful Albright scholars. Now I'm going to um, ask you, is any Albright event complete without a musical tribute from an Albright choral ensemble? My answer is no. Um, to end today's program, we will play for you a recording of our students performing the Albright alma mater under the direction of Jordan Schomper, visiting director of choral activities. During this performance, you may take the additional opportunity to put some final texts in the chat uh, and have some uh, re remaining conversations for the day.
After the alma mater, we will ask the speakers and the students to remain with us for group photos, but for everyone else, thank you for being part of our community of educational excellence. Have a fabulous day. Come cheer, alma mater.